As a person that loves aviation, the Boeing 747 holds a very special place in my heart. It was the plane that enabled all of us to travel fast around the world, the plane that unlocked aviation to all by enabling people outside the rich and famous to get to anywhere on earth affordably. With its four engines and large spacious interiors, it carried millions of people on flights as short as 40 minutes to world spending intercontinental 15 hour flights. As its numbers dwindled rapidly throughout the years, getting to see and fly on one became increasingly harder, especially on the older 747-400s with only Air China, Lufthansa, ASEANA and Saudia flying it in regular service. So when I chanced upon a flight on ASEANA's last remaining passenger 747, I immediately booked it. We will see how it's like flying on one of these classic aircraft on a short 2 hour hop from Tokyo Narita to Seoul Incheon in economy class. Glad that you are joining me today, so let me take you back to Tokyo Narita Airport, where this journey begins. Well, a very good afternoon from Tokyo Narita Airport. I just arrived from central Tokyo on the very fast and comfortable Keisei Skyliner. Narita Airport is located more than 60 kilometers from central Tokyo, making it quite a trek to get to, with express trains such as Narita Express and the Skyliner taking almost an hour to get to the airport. As I exited the train station, I entered this vast and spacious terminal here at Terminal 1, which is used exclusively by Star Alliance carriers such as Singapore Airlines and All Nippon Airways. There appears to be no queues at the ASEANA check-in desks this afternoon, so I got my boarding pass in a jiffy. Security was really quick too, with the whole process only taking 15 minutes from check-in to transit area. You can get some last minute souvenirs from the shops on the way to the gate, but I was just too excited to see my aircraft for today. Here it is! Parked here at gate 31 is this beautiful Boeing 747-400 belonging to ASEANA Airlines. HL-7428 is the last remaining passenger 747 left in ASEANA's fleet, and ASEANA recently announced that it will be retired in a couple of days on 25th of March 2024, with its last flight being OZ-712 from Taipei. Finally being able to see this aircraft in person was unbelievable, and being able to fly on it was an even greater honour. It seems that we were joined by quite a few Japanese AVE gigs on this flight as well, Alright, enough looking, let's spot our 747, shall we? Stepping on board the Boeing 747 was indeed a dream come true, as I never expected my 19 year old self to be able to find a reason to afford this trip. If you would like to join us in our mission to show you more of Asian travel, do consider contributing to our Patreon for as low as $2 a month. It can really help in covering our costs as we travel around Asia, trying and showing you many different airlines and other modes of transportation. Thank you! I was initially seated on the middle seat 23J, but the crew let me sit at a blocked 25A just after the doors closed. This seat comes with an amazing view of the iconic turbofans and wings of the Queen of the Skies that will take us to Seoul this rainy afternoon, making the experience even better. Now let's enjoy the sound of those General Electric engines as we take off from Tokyo's Narita Airport. Today's flight westbound to Seoul Incheon will be a quick 2 hours covering a distance of 780 miles. 
YouTube tells me a whopping 99% of you watching are not subscribed. So do remember to hit that subscribe button to help us reach 1000 subscribers. We thank you for your support. Okay, now a bit more information about the plane we are flying on today. This Boeing 747 is almost 26 years old as of March 2024 and has operated for ASEANA since 1999. In its history, ASEANA has operated a total of 9 passenger configured Boeing 747-400s offering a mix of first, business and economy class. 8 of them were either converted to freighters, sold or scrapped by 2017 with HL 7428 being the sole surviving passenger configured Boeing 747-400 in ASEANA's fleet. It was then reconfigured with the seating layout we see today, with the section we are sitting in being replaced with economy class. Amazingly, ASEANA has decided not to retire this one jet, choosing to retain it in passenger service with them only announcing its retirement recently for the 25th of March this year. Now, it's time to look at the seat features of this aircraft. Our economy seat is equipped with a pretty outdated in-flight entertainment system, better than nothing I guess, more on it in a bit. The legroom is wow. It's definitely one of the largest I've seen for an economy class seat, with a massive 34 inches of legroom. Definitely not a problem for me, who stands at 1.8 meters tall. The seat pocket contains the aircraft's safety card, some magazines, and a sanitized headset for the in-flight entertainment system. For such an old aircraft, it's quite refreshing to see that ASEANA has continued to maintain this aircraft in a pretty decent condition. The in-flight entertainment system is the type that was commonly seen in the 2010s, with a not so sensitive touchscreen and a controller with a card reader. For such an old system, it contains quite a few movies and TV shows in various languages. The air show was also pretty basic showing only various slideshows about our flight progress. Alright, it's time for lunch. For short regional flights like this, ASEANA provides a main dish coupled with a box of snacks and condiments. There weren't many choices for the main dish, with the whole aircraft given these Japanese style fish with rice dish. The fish cutlet was quite flavorful, with it covered with a layer of golden brown batter topped with a layer of teriyaki sauce. To give it more flavour, you can add ASEANA's special Korean gochujang sauce for a sweet and spicy kick. With the Japanese waffles and egg dessert, this was a pretty well-rounded meal, although my only criticisms are the small portion size of the main dish and the lack of other meal choices. A quick visit to the Lu really shows the age of this aircraft, with the Lu having a metal lever for the flush and a full metal construction for the sink area. Descending through this cloud layer signifies that our short time on the Boeing 747 is coming to an end. So let's enjoy this very foggy descent into Seoul Incheon Airport.
Welcome to Seoul Incheon Airport. To sum it up, it was definitely an amazing experience to fly the 747, especially flying it with such a very good view of the engines and the wing. The passenger experience was also a pretty decent one too, with a substantial meal service and a very spacious and decently maintained economy class seat. The cabin crews were a mixed bag though, with some doing what was required of them, while some of them looked visibly annoyed when passengers were requesting for something. For this flight, I paid a total of $300 for this one-way flight from Tokyo Narita to Seoul Incheon, which was very pricey for such a short flight, but given the rarity of the 747-400, it's a price that I am willing to pay for such a once-in-a-lifetime experience. Honestly, from a commercial standpoint, I felt that it doesn't make sense to keep only one unit flying, especially flying it with such a limited schedule. Kudos to Asiana for keeping this gem of an aircraft and allowing many of us to fulfill our dreams of flying on the Queen of the Skies. Thank you for joining me today in this special video of the Queen of the Skies. Do remember to like and subscribe and check out the Patreon we just launched. And I'll see you next time 